Thank you for joining us. I'm Paul Wilson. And I'm Chris Semke. Guys, today uh, we are out in a truck. Yeah. We haven't been in a ride along in a bit. I love doing ride alongs. That's right. We get out of the office. Yeah. It's a beautiful day here in Northern Illinois. Oh. It's so rare that we have to drive a shipbox on, on a ride along you know, either. It's like we really, we've, we've gotten fairly privileged in this aspect of yeah. like, do you have something really cool or something brand new? And today falls on, I would say both, if I'm just I, being honest. I mean, I think it goes further than that, right? Because as grateful as we are, if you would have thought about, you know, our tenure over at the shop, you know, calibrated power, Duramax tuner, you know, we tune Duramaxes, we tune Cummins. Um, we never thought that we'd be in the Ford world, right? No. And about five, six years ago, maybe seven years ago now, we started tinkering in the Fords. I never would have thought when I started at the company that I'd be driving a brand new, newly released 2023 HO67 Power Stroke. Uh, granted, I didn't know that that would be a thing down the road, but sure. it is, it's here and we're in it and it's super cool. It's so nice. I, I mean, is it gaudy? That there's like silver reflective trim on the inside, <laughs> and that and that Ford actually put Super Duty inside of the cab. They like, just want you to know. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little gaudy. <laughs> it, it is, but in the greatest way. Like, oh. like this is if I was designing something, this is how I would do it. I mean, way over the top, very yeah. in your face. It's very obvious that this is the nicest possible package you can put together. Yeah. Well, it's definitely not the nicest because oh. they, they do have limiteds, right? So oh, this isn't the most gaudy. Okay. okay? Uh, but it is up there. This is a, a better uh, trimmed or a better better spec truck, if you will. But uh, I mean, Ford really is saying, hey, like we've always been known for good interiors. We've been yep. known for good trucks. Pains me to say that. I'm not the Ford guy, but sure. um, Ford's always had a really <coughs> a nice or a superior truck. They've always been known for kind of being the staple of a good interior. Yeah. Um, even in you know the early 2000s, 20 teens, Ford has always been ahead of its uh, competitors when it comes to the interior layout. Um, you know, we've seen, you know, some of the, we, we haven't been in a 24 Duramax yet, but we've seen the new screen display. Yep. To me, it's a little awkward. Um, you know, I'm more in favor of the, the Ram. I like that screen, but again, it is a little awkward um, in the interior layout in the center and the dash. I'll say um, the screen in this is so nice. About the size of my first TV when I lived alone. Yeah, oh, 100%. Like this is, it's, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't know the size, a 20 inch screen. Yeah. It's, it's, it's enormous. It's recessed into the dash. It's yes. not in the way. There's no blind spots. You can see everything really well. Like everything about this dash is so simple. It is. Yet a lot of features exist and it flows. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a good way to put it. I, I, I have a hard time disagreeing with that. I will, I will say the screen itself, I, I like your, your point there. Being recessed in the dash, it feels like it belongs there. Yes. Uh, it feels like the rest of the dash was designed around the screen, of which course. is rare. It, usually it kind of feels like these screens are Just like get shoved into like yep. in between two sets of, of, of separate vehicles. Uh, but this one is done really nice. It's all touch screen. The, there are no buttons to control the screen, external buttons. It looks no. like they're all touch screen buttons. Uh, the external buttons around it, they, they're still there. They still yeah. exist. You can still do your hot and cold and all your temperature settings. Those Which all I have like external buttons. You have to think like in the in the in the RAM space to navigate that. That's all. That's all touch screen. Right. So like, if in a in a one day your screen were to fail, like you lose those functionalities altogether. Which. Here, you know, at least you have those analog buttons. You have that ability to. I, I like change. it. I like the idea because I know, like, uh, I've been in Jeeps and stuff where, again, it's it's kind of Big awkwardly. Jeep guy. <laughs> yeah. I've been in Jeeps uh, that are where it's it's awkwardly integrated into into some of the display stuff. This looks nice. This looks simple, yeah. easy to control. My wife would be able to figure this out. Um, you know, it's got a couple of USB plugs, USB-C I see down there, yeah. some 12 volt adapters, some of the basics, uh, and four wheel drive looks like it's pretty easy to switch on and off over there. Yeah. Now I will say, as far as like the interior layout, aside from the dash, the seats, nice leather, nice it is. seats, they're very comfortable. Yeah. Um, the steering wheel is something I want to point out. It seems like it's it's a bigger steering wheel than what I'm used to, and it might, might just be me. Okay. Um, but it has it's it's wrapped in a nice soft leather like the steering wheel is is comfortable to hold on to like this is very much a driver's truck in my opinion yeah very yeah. comfortable I, i've i've talked before whenever we drive a ford about how comfortable your your arm is that's on the door that's always that's a big, a big thing uh, yeah it really is, yeah but, man they they do it right and also like the 
the pistol grip on the door handle standard like Ford always does with a big lever uh, that you reach inside of the door yeah. kind of framing for uh, the lock and unlock the the cigarette spot right the the windows it's all very just intuitive it's all just very they did a nice job at the layout this yeah. is this is some of the small like touch points that that auto manufacturers commonly fuck up if I'm just being honest. Yeah. Or they'll put this stuff in weird new ways that look cool but function horrib horribly. Excuse me, function horribly. Uh, Ford did it right. Yeah. Um, now this one's equipped with these giant moonroof. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it's big. It's huge. Uh, looks like there's plenty of room in the back seat. Tim's got like six uh, six kids six car it. seats back there, yeah. so seems like he's good. Oh yeah, we borrowed this truck from uh, from our tuner over at the shop, Tim Mahoney. Uh, Tim's been on the show. He was just on talking DIY till I die. Uh, so yes, he might have a thirty-five hundred dollar rust bucket LB7, but he's daily driving now uh, this twenty twenty-three nice. six seven. And man, she is. It's a smooth ride. We're on oh. some of the back country roads out here in it, northern it Illinois. He does not drive like a full size truck. Yeah. So. One thing that I'd notice, like we haven't gotten into the special, the heart and soul of the truck, but. You know, I, I gotta tell you, from anybody that would call in saying that they have a 7.3 gas engine or, you know, maybe they have a 6.7 standard output versus, you know, the 6.7 high output, the trucks themselves are bitching. Like, yeah. these are nice trucks to drive. Yeah, yeah so, they, they tune the suspension to, to actually enjoy being in a truck. We're, uh, we're going over some harsher spots here. These are, these are backcountry roads, they're nice. you know, and it doesn't does not feel like we're bumping around. I don't feel my yeah. head touching the ceiling. Every I base everything off of my belly meter. Is my belly shaking? You there you know? go. This is not that much. Not yeah. that much yeah. for once, which is nice. Yeah. This so is, thanks, Ford. This Thank is, you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. Uh, you, you did mention the difference between the regular output and the high output. Now, this is a high output uh, engine. Yep. <sighs> We happen to have some inside knowledge on this high output engine, like what went into it. Yeah, well, you had you guys recently did a interview and in kind of a breakdown with Nick Pregnance of yeah. Calibrated Power, our boss, where uh, he had some choice words. To Nick, say the least. Nick, Nick went through it. Um, the difference, it seems to be, comes down to the turbocharging system and the factory tuning, would be my guess. Uh, hard to, to give a, an exact on that. I can tell you the turbochargers are different. Ford, God, I love Ford for taking swings when it comes to turbocharging. I do feel like because they're doing something new, it's inevitable that it's gonna fuck up. Um, but their new thing on the high output motors is they liquid cool the compressor cover. Okay. So they're, they're, it's this funky looking compressor cover that actually has coolant running through it. Uh, so it's actually, it's, you know, we know liquid cooling works and we know that that if we have colder air in the compressor, uh, we're gonna have a better reaction in the combustion. I mean, it makes sense, because I mean, you think about it, as a diesel owner or a diesel head, you know, you always talk about boost pressure and exhaust gas temps. That's... Now, if you were looking at a gasoline engine and maybe, you know, because we play around with some gas stuff at the shop and some of the guys there, some of us that play with some of the supercharger stuff, we always talk about intake air temps. Yeah. Well, real you're sensitive. Starting to, yeah. You're starting to see now, right? We are talking about liquid cooled compressor covers. Ford is clearly at the cutting edge of intake air temp control. Otherwise, why would you do it? Well, okay, Ford. I just just real quick because I don't disagree with your your theory here. But yeah. Ford has also done things like dual scroll uh, turbine wheel. Have you driven a They're, dual scroll compressor? Dual. I'm sorry, you're right. I'm one sorry. Of the dual scroll compressor. Have you I driven have, one? I have, they drive well. They, they when drive they work. well. <laughs> that, that's it. Uh, they have reliability issues. Uh, yeah. Twin turbocharging, compound turbocharging, yeah. more accurately. We love it. We've we've yeah. talked about it for years. Uh, we've driven tons of stuff with with compound chargers. Um, Fords work great when they're working. Yeah. Um, then they went to the six seven platform. They really we kind of thought, okay, they're done dicking around. Now they're going to buckle down. They're going to use a Garrett turbocharger. It's essentially the exact same as what GM was running. Um, they're going to buckle down. They're just going to do it right. They're going to they're going to crank it out. But man, they are not scared of innovation. Taking a swing with this, I have not heard of heard of or know of any reliability issues when it comes to this. I can't imagine that there will be. Uh, but then again, I can't imagine that there will be. 
So I, I don't know. That's my take on, on it. It's a cool idea. I like the technology and I like the thought around it. And I think, you know, as we play around with a lot of different engines, uh, you know, EcoBoost and some of the newer Cummins, you know, intake air temps are something that us in the aftermarket, we do consider and think about and look further into when turbo development and tuning development becomes a thing. So now to see this newer technology or this newer, you know, uh, cooling pathway in a sense yeah. you know it i could see it it makes sense it'll be cool to see what happens down the road um i mean you, you know, could get more it's, power it's out of less boost it's a cool idea yeah. more power out of less boost i like that because well, we're getting more air stressful. into the system you know it's right. less stressful right yeah. it's more useful air it's it's utilizing uh more energy in the volume of air that's being ingested into the engine essentially Absolutely. which these things get hot when they're under a load right there's no yeah. no arguing there but uh i gotta tell you you know i what everybody wants to know, right? What, what probably everybody is clicking onto this saying, hey, I don't give a shit about the trim. I don't give a shit about listening to you and Paul talk. I want to know about how the truck feels, right? Yeah. Like that, that's the hundred, you know, the hundred million dollar question here. And I got to tell you, we've driven a lot of stock trucks over the years. LMLs, L5Ps, uh, any of the Cummins, yeah. you know, any of the Duramaxes, three liter power strokes, three liter Duramaxes, two eights, everything, right? And there's always something that I've noticed on initial takeoff. You tow into the throttle and the truck is just, it's like it's lethargic, right? It just, it, it, it's like, hey, the throttle's pressed, but the ECM isn't like telling it to do anything, right? It's like, what's going on here? Think, think yeah. quick. Um, that couldn't be any further from the truth in this thing. It's pretty just, responsive. Oh man, I'll tell you what, you just touch the throttle and the truck just wants to go. It just, it is so nice. The response is there. It is um, predictable is probably a good word to put it. Okay. Um, and you pair that with this 10 speed trans, you know, the first gear, second gear, they're a little shorter in these things, but this truck just really gets up and goes and it's refined. 10 Very speed nice trans. Speed. I love that you bring up the 10 speed trans. Um, I've heard a lot of people out there saying that Ford built the Duramax 10 speed trans and that it's the same trans in the L5P as it is in the Fords. Oh, okay. Um, have, you, have you dealt with this? Have you had guys talking to you so about this? I've heard that there was a joint venture years back on the 10 speeds um, between GM and with Ford, but I was under the impression that that was on like the, the smaller 10 speeds, like what you would find in the ZL1 Camaro or the F-150 EcoBoost, those types of vehicles. Uh, I don't know if these are the same or if they're not, but um, there was a video that went live about a year ago, um, Randy's, uh, from Randy's Transmissions. Mm -hmm. They broke apart a 10-speed Duramax Trans, an 10-speed Allison, and then a 10-speed 4 transmission. Um, and if they were built the same, they're definitely not using the same parts. There's a lot of differences in the pickup truck 10 speeds. Yeah, yeah, I do wonder how much that joint venture has impacted just 10-speed transmissions yeah. in general. Uh, but I was, gonna, I was going to kind of the same point you are here that they are different. Uh, there are very distinct internal and external differences between them. Uh, however, yes, they're of similar architecture. So so I don't know enough about this uh, similar, to say this is one way or the other. Because it's a 10 speed? <laughs> that, that's kind of my thing. Right, right. It's like, like if you're comparing two trucks and you're like, man, I don't know. They both got pickup beds. Like, yeah. <laughs> they're both four doors. Yeah, yeah, you're right. They, they got wheels and all sorts of shit yeah. the same. Uh, but they're they're quite different once you get to know them, yeah, uh, I, mean, I think, is the thing to remember about them. Now, one of the big problems we've had on 10 speeds in the past is that they suck when you're under wide open throttle. Think you can uh, get us on a back road here and give us, a, yeah. give us a good pass on this thing and let's see what she does. Yeah, let's, uh, let's get through a little bit here and let's get back to this turn. We'll have a little straightaway. Corner's like a butte, Clark. Yeah, you know. Yeah, there's not too much pitch and roll. I mean, you know, it's a big truck. You're <laughs> sitting up high. Oh yeah. Um, this truck definitely gives you a feeling that it's 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 smaller than it really is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's the gearing or that that responsiveness of the truck, but this thing. So let's see here. We'll straight away and we'll roll into it. So it's got a little bit of boogie just clicking through that's really not bad no oh, we're at the we're at the vehicle speed limit of 
99 miles an hour in Mexico. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Don't feel like we're doing 99 miles an hour. No, so not at all. It wouldn't even shift in the tenth either. Yeah, so we're not. You no, know, we were there. We're not even maxing <laughs> maxing out the gears. Um, <laughs> you know, before oh, we found something to hold us nice. off. This but man, that really is that is nice. smooth for where we're at. And I'm right. watching the wind pushing the trees here. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's cooking out here. So like, to have it feel that smooth and that relaxed right. when you're putting it under that much load, that's always really impressive to yeah. me. And it's 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 tough, right? You know, as we get to drive these trucks, it's it's difficult to not compare. Well, this truck drove like that, but that truck drove like this. Yeah. And um, you know, to all the guys, to your point earlier about oh, it was a joint venture with the ten speeds. If it was a joint venture and it's a calibration difference, or if there are hard are hard part differences, the GM the GM guys uh, the GM engineers really need to follow in Ford's footsteps because it was one of the few times I would agree yes, with that statement. Yes, this thing just it shifts nice. I'm going to turn on this straight away and I'm going to give it a wide open throttle at an earlier RPM when you know earlier vehicle speed. But that's four. That's six. That's seven. See, it's a little. It's a little sluggish going through the gears. Um, as far as holding them, it's holding them longer than what, and sluggish isn't the right word. No. It's holding the gears a little bit longer than what I expected it okay. to. Okay. Because usually with the higher amounts of gears, we get shorter times in between. But it's the also shift. skipping the shift. So when it was holding that gear longer, it was skipping up a gear. Okay, which which is nice to have. Because it was wide open yeah, throttle, yeah, yeah. so it didn't have all the shift cuts, right. I would assume. But I could, you know, I've had the luxury of towing, not in this truck, but in a, uh, a 22. And uh, I'll tell you what, towing with a 10 speed is a game changer. Really? Any, oh, my God. Anybody who has a 10 speed or is looking for a new truck and tows with the truck, the 10 speeds are, are nice. Because to your point, um, they have the shorter gear so they can be constantly shifting, just keeping the engine right in its operating range the entire time. Yeah. Now you don't have that RPM drop. So the truck is constantly at 1700 to 2000 RPM, just each gear is shifting. Well, yeah. And, and what I was surprised by here when we were, when you were on it there was it was holding the gears longer than I expected and getting in from out of a gear and into a gear much quicker. quicker. Than you thought, than yes. You yes. yes. Yeah. Usually that, we have the that. exact opposite yeah. problem is usually it's, it, it holds a gear only for two seconds, yep. and then it feels like it takes five seconds yep. to actually shift from one gear to the next. This didn't do that. This no. had all the positive attributes that you're looking for. No, this thing definitely does not have what I would consider an exaggerated D-fuel. Yeah. I got to say, just the, the throttle input, this feels, this feels like we're driving a tuned 20 to 22 truck. Okay. Just all for all intents and purposes, it feels like we're already in a tuned truck. And this is what the factory offers. This is what Ford has said. Hey, uh, we're gonna. I don't know what. You know what the charge up up charge is to do a high output? Uh, I've heard it is twenty five hundred bucks. Okay. And you get like twenty five horsepower and a hundred foot pounds of torque, or one hundred and twenty foot. But you get the torque. liquid cooled compressor cover. Yeah. Because the standard output doesn't have. Does that. not have it. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what else comes in that uh, HL package? You get a red uh, six seven on the badge. Okay. So the badge on the door. So you get a participation. Says badge. is red instead nice. of the normal color. So that's that. That's the flex. Yep. To have, yeah. Have the yeah. They don't. didn't. They didn't make like a high output badge yet. Yeah. Okay. Maybe next year. See, I would have rather like it be a black badge for HO to look nicer and have the red badge be the standard. I mean, we're Who in a white. A red badge? We're in a white truck. Uh -huh. So like the red pops, it's hard to argue I guess, that. I guess. Uh, it, it definitely stands out. And Ford is Ford is kind of all about being flashy, if we're just being honest. Like who else writes Super Duty? You know, the like you don't see Silverado or or Ram. Oh no, wait, you do see Ram no. across everything. I um mean, Yeah, I don't know. They've all gotten they've all gotten a little ridiculous with it, uh, in my opinion. It's okay, and not in a bad way. I like it. Uh, I definitely enjoy it, but but it's it's rare to find much understated. Another thing, the downshifting. You know, I come from, you know, the Cummins world, right? And uh, you feel every upshift and you feel every downshift and yeah. I don't care what year it is. Sure, well you drive regular old clunk boxes. I do, I do. smooth, yeah. Um, this thing, you don't feel the downshift. Not at all. As much as you don't feel the upshift. Like yeah. this thing is very refined from a transmission operation. I really don't want to get out of the driver's seat. I know you probably got to get. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna need some time uh, behind the wheel here, but um, but I don't want to give it up. It is it is smooth. This is this is a nice truck. Yeah. 
another thing, the digital, the digital dash. So in 23, they go to a, a full digital uh, gauge cluster and everything like that. So no longer the analog gauges. I don't know how I feel about that just yet. I guess both you and I have come up driving shit boxes yep. that are older and broken down. So we've seen what stuff doesn't last yep. 20 years. Yep. Uh, so you got to imagine getting this truck 20 years from now. It's going to be like one of those where you're like, oh, yeah, no, just every one of these 23s needs a new yeah. dash, right? There's going to be like some wiring kit that will be on the market where you can plug into the dash and then plug into a tablet or like an iPad. Yeah. That way you have a dash. But so you don't have to buy a, a replacement dash. If you think about it, we know analog gauges and analog dashes that are also notorious for failure. They do. Um, so like if it's digital or if it's analog, you assume 10, 15, 20 years from now, the price of those things hopefully will come down and yeah, it'll be you know true. readily available. And I mean, or the other reality is like we're doing now, which is hunting junkyards, trying to find, you know, Anything. your LLY dash uh, yeah. that's only a little cracked instead of smashed. <laughs> yeah, pull this thing over. I think uh, I think I need to get behind the wheel and see what she actually feels like. Uh, Chris, we have just swapped and I'm looking down at the digital dash and there's a picture of all of the seat belts and green check marks. They, yeah. The seat turns green and a check mark comes up. Well, safety first. When the seat belts are clicked. That's fancy. Yeah. That's just, you know, that's fancy. All right, let's beat on somebody else's truck here. No, I'm just oh. joking. We're gonna go nice and smooth. Uh, Steer, you know, I've been in a lot of these uh, brand new trucks that I get into it and I'm like, is the steering wheel too responsive? Is it not responsive enough? Like how smooth does it feel to drive? And I'll tell you this, and I'll tell you this one, uh, feels just, just right. The steering wheel to me feels very light. It does, yeah. It's very effortless to yeah, turn. Yeah, like there's nothing there. There's nothing there. I don't know if that's the size of the steering wheel. Cause like I said, I feel like the steering wheel might be a little bit on the bigger side. I could be completely wrong. Maybe it's, Maybe it's the, the wrapping and the thickness of the steering wheel and, and how it's proportioned. Okay. Don't maybe. know. Maybe it's the lightness. Maybe it's just the way uh, yeah. the assisting of the, the steering is, the power like there's, steering. Yeah, like there's no resistance no, to trying to be all. like, my kids could do it with their fingers. Tips, of course. You know? But it's just, it's very, it's not laborsome to drive. It's probably the best way for me to put it. All right. Yeah, it's smooth, man. And the throttle uh, takes almost nothing to, to no. get it up and going. Like, I mean, you know, just... usually to do 70 miles an hour, you have to actually apply like a good 20% throttle input, yeah. right? Because there's just so much weight to these trucks and things like that. But that's not here. I mean... No, here I, I'm barely resting my foot against it. So there's just the smallest amount of throttle input. My guess would be five or 10% throttle input. And it just wants to run 60 miles an yeah. hour. And you got one takeoff here, but once you get up to this light, it just, like I said, the truck just, it's like Ford programmed this thing to make it all work together. Yeah. You don't feel like this truck is fighting itself in any way to do anything. No, no. In a very, yeah, very effortless way. Uh, smooth. I'm over here on the driver's side now. There's a few more buttons. The steering wheel buttons, man, they, they, they have packed. I'll just say, in my opinion, too many goddamn buttons onto the steering wheel. Uh, I'd have to sit through a night class or two to try to figure out what all of these things do. I certainly wouldn't try to do it while I'm driving. Well, you see, one's for cruise control. <laughs> then you set it. <laughs> then you got volume. And that's it. What else do you need? But I don't think you need anything what else. What else do you need? You got the wife muter and you got the, <laughs> the luxury mode. All right. Probably 40, 50% input. It's it's it just, quick, it's snappy. It yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like usually that's the rough spot too, right? Like I know you were testing the wide open throttles. Yeah. That's usually where we find the flaws in the shifting uh, or the big delay down low, which would show you like really kind of exaggerate turbo yeah. lag or or just under responsive dead pedal we would normally call it. Um that mid throttle input that that usually at least for me that kind of gives me my baseline of the truck. It's like, okay, if I'm driving it to the limits of what I should uh, how does it do? Because that's how I'm going to normally drive in traffic. I think you know you you compare the the newer the newer trucks, all three, and there's been this stigma around the Fords over the last probably four or five years, where we've driven. You know, this goes back to our 17 up Ford 50 that we had at the shop. You drive it stock, and you're like, why change anything? It just drives well. Yeah. Right. 
where you know you have the ram or even the gm there are some loose ends that you know we can get in and be like oh i would change this and i want to change this and i want to change that but you drive this thing and you know everybody wants more power everybody wants you know a, a quicker shift everybody wants you know a little bit broader of a torque curve um especially coming from a tuned truck you get this new truck that's badass and it's like okay well if my old truck was badass with a tune and this new truck is that much more badass how much better could the truck perform right that's just the natural instincts as a diesel truck owner i feel but you get in this thing like i, I don't know if there's a lot that i could pick apart to be like this is really really killing me i need to put a calibration on here to fix this granted more is better but the truck does drive well under its factory configuration. You know, I, I, don't, I don't disagree with you, uh, but I did hear very similar things the first time I got into an L5P with Nick. Okay. And I did hear very similar things the first time I got into uh, the previous generations of this 6.7. Uh, it was like, damn, it's already so good. Why would anybody do it? And I think the, the L5P, I heard that a lot more. Um, just because the LML had such a dramatic dead pedal, it was such that. a problem uh, that, like, you know, your your wife would drive it and she would talk about, you know, this horrible dead pedal and why won't this thing get out of its own way. Uh, and the L5P, they, they really worked on correcting that. 17 and newer Duramaxes, they got a lot better. Um, with this, I, I would say yes. I would say there's no standout, like... I got home and complained about a type of problem. Yeah. I agree. I agree there. That, that's. I think that's a I fair see, statement. You know, you, you do a turbo upgrade down the road or you do different tires. That's going to warrant calibration change to take place. Yeah. But, I mean, if, if I bought this truck and I called a tuning company, I called Calibrated Power, like, hey, is there 23 support? I need to get this thing tuned. And they were to, someone on the other line would be like, well, no, it's not available yet or whatever that case may be. I, I wouldn't get off the phone upset. Yeah. You know, like fair. it's like, okay, I understand it's a new platform, which this is. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's just little things like that because generally when you get these newer trucks, you know, with newer ECMs and, and, and the different uh, ECM support, it, it can take a couple of years. It could take a year or two for that support to be available. Sure, sure. And I think there's also, there's a different, you know, breed of people buying brand new trucks like this. Well, uh, what makes you think that? You, you have to be in a certain income bracket just to be able to consider it. I, oh, mean, well, I mean, let's okay. just be honest. These trucks, you know, when we were coming up and, and you had a $40,000 truck, that was really expensive. But somebody who had like a pretty good union job, like that really wasn't shit to right. them. Um, now trucks are, you know, 70, 80, 90, 100, $110,000. Yeah. Um, you know that real that guy with a really good union job he may not consider jumping straight into a nine hundred dollar a month payment for the next eight years or whatever yeah, it is true. right so no, i mean the the cost of these trucks are going up and uh, going up dramatically right we've seen that over the last what three or four years yeah right you're getting a lot of truck for the money though and i you think are. that's something that also needs to be considered you know to compare this to compare this to a truck that was for forty fifty thousand dollars when we were you know coming up in in the late you know 2000s early 20 teens so six four a six four or let's say you know the early 20 teens you know a, a okay, early, six, early seven, six seven yeah. you know we'll talk one of these trucks 10 to 15 years you know and, and compare it there there isn't a comparison like there really isn't much of a comparison besides yes it's a truck that you can get four or two doors uh that's sure. four wheel drive with a bed like the technology, the refinement, the power capabilities, the torque output, everything about this truck is more. Yeah. Yeah, the, there has been a dramatic escalation, not only in price, but in performance and what you get for it. That's a good point to make. You're getting a lot of bang for your buck. Um, I think it's always interesting when we get into these and and you think about all of the engineering that had to go into not just the injectors and the CP3 and the turbo and the transmission, but every little thing inside the vehicle. I mean, I'm seeing uh, contactless charger spots, phone spots, yeah. you know, little cubbies, little, the way the vents point. My ass on this side is freezing cold. I assume it's he nice, has nice. the heat cooler so, yeah. Yeah, cranked all the way the up. Vent on, you know? All the way. Um, no sense that we got to work and not be comfortable. Yeah, 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 yeah. fair, fair. This is a hard job. So we, we do deserve every inch you know, of comfort we can scrape stressful. from it. Yeah. You know? Jesus, I can't believe we still get to do this. For today, this has been Paul Wilson. And Chris Emke. Thanks so much for listening.